Hi and welcome back. In this video we're going to have a look at a compressor plugin and look at what it does and what the different controls do. Basically a simple way of describing a compressor is maybe to look at it as a kind of automatic volume control. So it's a way of kind of riding the faders if you like so that as things get louder you can turn them down a bit automatically and then as things get quieter turn them back up again. And essentially that's how they originally started, that's why they were invented. It was more or less for catching vocals for radio so that the volume could be a little bit more even. But they've also evolved over time to be used as a kind of an effect as well as a way of correcting volume changes. So to start with, the way it works is you have a threshold control, all compressors have this, and that's the way of setting at which point the compressor will start working. So the sound comes in to the compressor, and as soon as it crosses over this threshold, then the compressor starts working. Now if we just trigger a clip to give you an idea. At the moment, that sound that's coming in isn't going over that threshold, so nothing's happening. So I could turn that off and it won't make any difference. But as soon as I start to pull that down, you can hear what's happening is it's kind of actually getting louder, but it's also having another effect on the sound, and that's the compressing effect. But this indicator here, GR, stands for gain reduction. Now most compressors will have some form of indicator that tells you just how much the compressor is working. That's what this is doing. It's telling us that it's reducing the level by this much. Now the reason it sounds louder at the moment when I start bringing the threshold down is because this make up gain button is enabled. Now not all compressors will have something like that and in a lot of cases you might have to do that manually just by turning the actual output up. But the make up gain is a way of automatically compensating. As you start to compress the sound it will increase the output level. So without that enabled you can hear what happens as you pull the threshold down. It compresses more and more and the sound actually gets a bit quieter because it's actually reducing the level of the louder parts but it's not compensating for them. So you'd have to do it manually by turning the output up. But we do have this makeup gain control, so I'll just leave it on. And in that case, probably want the output to stay below 0 dB. Now, as for how much it compresses, that's decided by this ratio control here. And the way that works is, if it's set to 2, as it is at the moment, then for every 2 decibels that come above the threshold, only 1 is passed to the output. Likewise, if you have a ratio of 3, for every 3 dB, only 1 to the output. So as you increase the ratio, it's increasing the amount of compression. And you can see this little indicator here moves as I change that. And likewise, it changes according to the threshold. Now, you can see that looks a bit like a knee. That's what this knee setting here is actually for. It's a way of smoothing that transition. So as soon as the sound goes above that threshold, with the knee turned all the way down, that's what they call on some compressors a hard knee setting, then the compression just starts straight away. But if you start turning that up, you can see it's basically smoothing it so that the compression starts happening a bit more gradually. So that can create a much smoother and softer sound. You won't always notice it though, it can be a quite subtle effect, but a harder knee setting can be punchier and less smooth. Now aside from these settings, the two other most important controls that you'll always find on a compressor are the attack and release settings. Now as we saw in the previous video, when we were talking about amplitude envelopes or volume envelopes, it's really important for being able to decide how the sound changes over time. So what happens in the case of the attack is that allows us to set how quickly the compressor will start working after that threshold is crossed. So at the moment, when the sound goes above this threshold, of minus 20 dB, it'll take 10 milliseconds for it to start working. That's a very short time, but if you'll remember in the previous video, when we looked at the snare sound, the attack of the actual snare sound was very fast. So if we want to actually catch that initial attack, then we need a very fast attack time. Now in a lot of cases we don't necessarily want to do that, and that's because 
our ears are actually very sensitive to these attacks or what, what they call transients. And sometimes, especially with speech, if you squash them all, then it leaves things sounding very unnatural. And in the cases of snare drums, it can also be quite unnatural, but it's a bit of a trade-off because, as you can see, the level is so different to this later part of the sound, and it comes in very fast and very loud. A snare drum is a loud, percussive sound, and most of the energy is right at the start. So you probably want to allow some of that natural attack through, and that means not having the attack up so much. But if you've got a real difficulty taming those levels and keeping the levels under control, then you might need a fast attack so that it catches those transients and allows you to squash them. Now you can hear what's happening there is it's actually reducing the level at the start and bringing out the level at the end. And that can be quite a cool effect, but it's not necessarily a natural effect. So it always depends on what you're going for. If you want that interesting effect, then it's fine. But if you want it to sound a bit more natural, it might be better to allow some of that attack through. But you can see, as I turn that up, we start to get a little bit of clipping over the output here. So that's really the trade-off, is how much do you want to squash those initial transients and whether you're happy for them to not sound as natural in favour of getting the levels more under control. So it also depends on what you're mixing with it and things like that. And we'll have a look at all of this in more detail in the coming videos. Secondly, the release is the opposite to the attack. It's how fast the compressor stops working after the sound goes back below the threshold. So it's equally as important. If anything, in some ways, it might be more important because it can really affect the timing of the sound. So if we go back to the actual full loop. Now, with a long release time, You can hear what it does is it carries on compressing for quite a long time so the whole thing sounds very flat and very compressed and it's losing a lot of the natural dynamics. Whereas if you have a shorter release time then you can hear it's creating that much bigger sort of Led Zeppelin type drum sound. And the reason it's doing that is basically what's happening is the compressor starts working. I mean, it's really very quickly, 1.39 milliseconds, but it's still allowing some of that initial peak through. And it compresses very quickly and then it stops compressing very quickly as well. So that means that because we've got this make up gain button enabled, it's increasing the overall level, but it's just squashing this beginning part. So you're squashing that then bringing the whole lot up and that has the effect of making this later part sound louder. And that's why we're hearing what's kind of like the room reverb in the sound. So if I just trigger the snare on its own, you can hear it's sort of like we're hearing a bit more of the actual room that it was recorded in. Now, some compressors, like this Waves H-Comp, actually have more controls for the release stage. If we have a look here, you can see that we have the normal release type control, which is just in milliseconds, and that's just like the Ableton one. But we can also choose Host, which means it will synchronize to the host program, which is Ableton Live, which has a BPM of 94. Or you can just manually type in your BPM like this. So that's very useful for keeping things tightly in time. And that's kind of what I was saying is that the release is actually very important for timing. That's why they allow you to do this on the release and they don't necessarily worry about it on the attack. Because the release can really affect the timing of the sound because it tends to be much more audible. Some compressors allow you to do that. Otherwise, really, a lot of the time you can just do it manually yourself by ear. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching.